Hi, in this video I will demonstrate how to use Paint Splat Direction for Photoshop. With this preset you can create beautiful artistic shots in a few clicks. Let's take a look at some examples. Using the action on this image and after a bit of customization I had a result like this. And this is a variation. This is the second image. And this is the result of the second image. And here is a variation made with the second image. In this case, uh, I use the text as mask. Third image. Fourth. Variation Ok, let's close these images and see how to install the package. Let's start installing the action file. To do it, go to menu window, select actions. When the action panel opens, click the icon at the top right here. Select load actions. Select the action file and load it. As you can see, the action file now is correctly installed. These are the two actions of the package. Now let's install the brush file. To do it, go to menu window, brush preset. Click here, load brushes, and select and select the correct file for your version of Photoshop. Load it. As you can see, also the brushes are now installed, and you can recognize them better if you change the view mode here to something like large list. Here it is. Now we can open an image to work with. I use this one for the demonstration. Before playing the action, there are a few things to check. First of all, go to menu image, mode, and make sure that the image is set to RGB color mode and 8 bits per channel. Then, make sure that the image has a nice resolution, uh, resolution between 2000 and 5000 pixel works very good. If you're working on a low resolution image, like 1000 pixel, uh, some error message could appear during the action's playback. In this case, stop the playback and change the resolution of the image to something higher and playback the action again. Then make sure that the image has a nice contrast. To do it, open the level adjustment. As you can see, this image has both a black point and a white point, so it's good. But I could also make the contrast a bit higher. so that the action can work better with this image. Then go to the layers panel, click the button here at the top right, select panel option and make sure that this option add copy to copy layers and groups is active. Click OK. Make sure also that the image is set as background layer here. You can recognize it by the lock and if your image is not set as background and you have a situation like this, you can select the layer, go to layer, new, background from layer, and set it as background. Now, here in the layer panel, click this button to create a new layer. Double click the layer, I rename it mask, 
all lowercase like this. Then select a brush tool. Then select a brush from the brush panel. Use a brush that is uh, not too much soft, like paint splatter, uh, standard hard work very good. Uh, the brush doesn't need to have 100% hardness. It could be also a bit less, but not too much because uh, otherwise you will have less details in your final image. Okay. Now select a visible color. And brush over the area of the image where you want the effect to appear. Okay, I have already prepared a mask for this image and I'm going to use that one. Oops, this one. Okay, let's delete this layer. Just write this and call this layer mask. Okay, now we have our mask and we are ready to use the action but before make sure that you have only two layers on your file and are named like this background set as background and mask without caps and also make sure that your brush tools has the opacity and flow parameters set to 100% and the airbrush mode is off now open the action panel again select the paint splatter action and click play at the beginning of the playback this message will appear it asks you to check if the opacity and flow of your brush tool is set to 100%. If uh, the, the values are correct, click continue. If they are not, click stop, change the values, and click play again on the action. Uh, in this case, they are correct, and I can click continue. The playback will take around 4 minutes, and uh, at the end, a message will appear, and I will skip this part, so I'll see you in a few. Okay, the playback of the action is finished. You can click a continue and also close the actions panel. And what you see now is the result of the playback of the action. Uh, by default, the action is only a certain set of paint effects, but in the layers panel, there are a lot more paint effects that you can unhide and use. First thing to do after the actions playback is to organize better the layers panel. As you can see, it's a bit messy. And to do it quickly, go to the first group, Paint Splatter Output, which is the main group of the effect, and hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and click the arrow near the group here. Okay, the group closes. Now release Alt or Option from your keyboard and open the group again. And as you can see, now the layers are better organized. You can recognize each main group that meets the effect by the color. Uh, we have the color correction group at the top. Then we have the post effects group. We have the color group which is hided by default. The foreground group and the background group. We will take a look at each one of these groups and see how to customize them. Let's start from the bottom but first hide the four visible groups. The first layer is source and it's just a copy of the background image with the mask applied to it. This layer can be useful later during the customization phase if you want to add uh, more filters and effects to the main image. Then we have the background group, unhide it and open it. Inside there are four other subgroups and the first one is background color and this is just a uh, fill color for the background, a basic fill color and as it says here, unhide, try one of these layers at a time unhide one of them at a time let's unhide also the foreground to see better what's happening in the overall image and as you can see here you have different color options that you can choose from And if you want to use a custom color, you just need to click on the thumbnail of one of these layers, double click it, and choose your color. Okay, and also the first option here in this group is, uh, is called original background color. 
which is a blurred version of the original image. The wall effect has alpha channel, so for example you can also hide the whole group of background color and unhide the original image here to have an effect like this. Okay, let's put it back how it was. Next we have the background contour fill group, open the group. As you can see inside here we have four other layers. These are paint fill effects. Okay. Let's see how to customize them and pay attention because all the paint effects generated by the action works in the same way. So once you know how to customize the background contour fill, you will also know how to customize all the other splash effects. And it is very simple. Uh, for example, you can modify the opacity here on the layers panel to make the effect more or less visible. Also, you can modify the blending mode here. Okay. And if you want to change the color uh, of the layer, open the layer styles of the layer, double click on color overlay, double click on the color and change color. Okay, if you want to change blending mode to the color overlay, you can undo it here because this parameter is uh, overrided by the main blending mode of the layer. So you can do it going here or here from the layers panel. Each paint layer has a mask channel and you can use it to hide parts of the layer that you don't want to be seen. And to do it, select the max channel, select the brush tool, pick a black color, and brush over the area that you want to hide. You can use both a soft or a hard brush. And you can also invert this mask to hide everything and makes the white parts visible. So now if I select the mask channel and brush with a white brush, I will unhide the parts that I want. Okay, let's invert the mask again. You can also combine and blend all of these layers. So for example, if you want all of them to have the same color, I can pick this first layer where I have my custom color, right click it, Select copy layer style, control click all of these layers to select uh, all of them, then right click and pass layer styles. As you can see now all of these control field paint effects are green and now I can select them all and also change the opacity here to all of them at the same time. Or also change the blending mode here and try different combinations. This workflow is the same for all the other paint effects with some little variations that we will see later. Next there are the background splashes. Open the group. As you can see by default there are three layers visible and four hided. You can customize also these layers with the same method used uh, with the background contour fill. Uh, the only difference is that each one of these layers has also a bevel emboss layer style that you can unhide to add a bit of depth to the paint effect. Okay, so let's take a look also to these effects. During the playback, the action will uh, position these four splashes in a random position, not far from the uh, main foreground. This is to prevent them from going out of the canvas and if you want to hide one of these layers and you cannot see it, just uh, select it at, and press Ctrl T or Command T on your keyboard and you will see this bracket. Now you can move the layer and you can see here the splash number one and you can modify the position, rotation and scaling all of, of all of this layer. 
and also duplicate them by pressing Ctrl J or Command J on your keyboard. Okay. So let's take a look also to the other background splashes. If you want to change the color of uh, one splash to make it more visible, you can use the same method you have before. Change the co color overlay here, like this. But in Photoshop uh, CS6 and CC, you can also assign uh, layer styles to groups. So for example, I could uh, double click this group and assign a, a color overlay here, make it white. And now all the layers inside of this group will be white. Uh, this cannot be done with the previous versions of Photoshop, only CS6 and CC. Uh, in the earlier versions you will have to do this one by one. Or by copy pasting the layer styles. Okay, let's take a look also to the other layers. Splash number two. This one. If I don't have auto select here and layer here, I can drag the layer like this. Okay. And you can position as you like it and also modify the rotation a bit like this. Then we have a splash number three. Number four. Here I want to delay this little uh, sphere here, so select the mask channel, uh, black brush, and paint over. Okay, then we have big splashes. We have three layers of big splashes. This is the first one, second one, third one. Okay, and you can also create custom splashes. Uh, if you check in the brushes preset panel, uh, all the brushes have the same name of the layers. So, for example, if I want to add uh, some splashes to the splash number two, I can select the RGB channel of splash number two, select the brush PS splash zero two. Select any color because it's overrided uh, from the color overlay of the group and brush over. Okay. And if I want to decide the orientation of the brush, I can go here on the brush panel and deactivate, turn off the shape dynamic option here. Now it will be always oriented in the same way and I can decide here. Where it will be facing. Okay. And I can use the mask as said before to hide parts of the of the paint effect. Selecting for example a this is not the correct mask channel here and paint over. You can do the same here in the background splashes but also in the other paint effects using the main mask of the group like this. And this way you can change a bit the initial shape of the paint effect and have more variations. Next we have the small splashes group. Let's open it. And the usage of this group is identical to the previous one. And let's make this, all of these layers, this group white, so that we can see it better. Okay. So we have first the grain. All of these layers are 75% opacity. We can change it if needed. Then we have dots. Dots number two, small splashes, other small splashes, screen.
scribble effects. Okay, so let's choose one of these and maybe a couple. And we can go ahead and talk about the foreground group. Open the foreground group and hide everything inside of it. And starting from the bottom, here we have a foreground base color, which is a basic fill color for the foreground. And the usage of this layer is similar to the other paint effects layer. Uh, you can modify the opacity here, blending mode here, and color using the color overlay here. Okay, then we have the soft glow, which is a tiny glow around the perimeter of our foreground. And here you can modify also here the opacity, or also modify the layer, layer style outer glow here, make it more large like this. And or also change the color. Okay. Next we have the foreground shadows, midtones, and highlight paints. Let's unhide these layers one by one. These are the shadows. These are the midtones. And this is, these are the highlights. Okay. Let's unhide also the strokes and the foreground details to see the overall effect. Okay. And here, also here, the method for customization is uh, the same used uh, previously. You can modify opacity and blending mode here, or also change the color from the color overlay layer style. As you can see, these uh, shadow paints, highlight paints, and midtone paints. Uh, they have also the Bevel and Boss uh, layer style and it's active. Uh, okay, as you can see, all these layers have a particular type of mask and, and in some of them it's active and in a couple of them it's uh, unactive. And this mask uh, filters a lot of details contained in, in the layer. Uh, to deactivate mask, you can select the mask channel hold shift on your keyboard and click okay and as you can see now I deactivated the mask of shadow pane number 3 and the details appeared here okay so let's hide them all and holding shift to hide all of the mask and I can try another combination of uh, mask holding shift I unhide this time the highlight paint number 1 the mid, mid tone spin number three, and maybe this. And try it yourself and find your favorite combination. But if you unhide them all, the result will look messy. Okay. Now let's take a look at the strokes group. Let's close the paint groups here of the foreground. Hide the details. Okay. And this is the strokes group. Starting from the bottom, we have thin stroke, which is this thin stroke here. And you can modify the layer style and make the stroke more visible by double clicking it and changing here the pixels, the pixel size, like this, okay. And also here you can modify opacity and blending mode. Then we have shadow strokes, mid-tone strokes and highlight strokes. And also here on this layer, layers you can modify the opacity and blending mode and also the color from the color overlay and as you can see uh, also these layer have a part these layers have a particular type of mask and if the mask is not active the layer will give a soft effect while uh, if the masks are active it will have a more sharp effect okay so now let's see let's unhide the foreground details uh, group Starting from the bottom, we have the dark details. 
dark details number one, bright details, and another bright details. And also here you can change the same things, opacity, blending mode, and the color. As you can see, the bright layers are set to light and uh, color mode. Also, screen and soft light works very good, while the dark layers are set to multiply. And here, the color burn or linear burn works uh, very good too. Next, we have the foreground reveal layer, which is very important because using it, uh, you can reveal important parts of the image. And for example, I want to re reveal some parts of the camera, some parts of the hand of the girl, and also the eye. So to do it, select the mask channel of the foreground reveal uh, layer, select the brush with a white color. I will select a soft brush and paint over the area where I want to reveal some details of the original image. Not too much, just the important parts. And if you want to check uh, which is the full potential of this level, you can deactivate this mask. To do it, as I said before, you can use you can hold Shift and click the mask, and you can see the full potential of the layer. Okay. And this layer uh, is set to luminosity with 50% uh, of opacity. You can modify the opacity. And here also the lightning bend, light and blending mode works very good. Now let's close the foreground group and unhide the colors group and open it. Okay, as you can see now uh, our image is colored uh, with the foreground color fill layer, which is this one. Uh, it's set to color blending mode and you can modify its opacity here okay as you can see the paint effect the paint effects uh, doesn't have the color of the foreground but uh, you can have it by unhiding the background color fill layer and when you do it you will see some color that ap appear near the foreground okay but the problem here is that this layer background color fill has this mask channel if you want to watch a mask channel hold alt on your keyboard and click it okay this is our mask channel and these are the default paint effects made made from the action after the playback and since we have changed our paint effects we'll need to update this mask to do it, it's very easy and quick. Open the Actions panel, select the, the second action of the package, Update Mask of Background Color Fill, and click Play. This action will grab all the paint effects and will merge them and make a mask. Okay, as you can see, now we have an updated mask of our paint effects. And this layer is set to color, and you can also use normal here. To have a result like this okay and as you can see you you have masks also here in the color layers uh, one here for the foreground and one here for the global control here so you can use it you can use also this mask for example uh, I can invert this mask pick a white color with a brush and decide where to color hair and head for example like this also some splashes okay now let's unhide the past effects group don't worry if the image loses contrast because we can decide it later from the color correction. 
ok first layer here we have the viewpoint layer it's set to normal 50% ok let's see it uh, usually the viewpoint layer is a bit too much hard with bright images so in this case I will use 30% of opacity or maybe less 20 ok then we have a grain layer which is this fine grain here is set to 70%, I could use 100% to make it more visible. Then we have Sharpen for the foreground. And then we have a Texture Group, Texture Effects Group. Open this group. Here you can find 8 different textures. The default one is the canvas, which is this one. Okay, all the texture layers are set to 60% of opacity. You can modify it here to make them more visible. And then we have, let's take a look at all of them. We have vertical noise, horizontal noise, a normal noise, and for example, you can blend a horizontal, a horizontal noise with the canvas to make it look like wet paper ok then I can modify also the opacity of the second one if I want to make it more visible ok so you can try also combination with the texture layers the fourth one we have circles waves lines and dots okay let's close the post effects group and unhide the color correction group also this group is pretty straightforward we have three global adjustment layers one for the hue and saturation you can double click it and modify the parameters one for the levels and one for the contrast and to modify this change its opacity if you want to add contrast change its opacity and, and it will be more contrast ok then we have the color correction options group open as you can see inside of it there are 18 color correction options and uh, number one is active by default and hide them one by one and choose your favorite as you can see there are 11 color, co color options 5 black and white options and one negative option When you choose your favorite, remember that you can combine it also with another color correction option and that also you can modify its opacity here and make it less visible. Okay, And also you can open each uh, color option and modify the adjustment layers inside of it. And this is all. Thank you for your attention.